Now, I am here with one of the pioneers of 80s funk who's still dropping hot music today, Mr. Morris Day. Welcome back. Now, um, Morris, back in your hometown of Minneapolis, you met the late great Prince back in high school. Now, how did you become friends and later you know, on become bandmates in the group Grand Ave? Grand Central. But you know what, um, the, back then, when I moved to Northside Minneapolis, I lived right around the corner from Prince. And I mean, he must have been like nine years old. And I didn't even know, you know, uh, who he was back then. But I remember seeing he and his sister, Tyka, out playing. And, you know, they had the nicest house, you know, on the north side, I think, you know. So he was living pretty decent even back then. But I didn't really formally meet him until like about four or five years later. And um, um, I was going to a high school dance. And I thought I was going there to meet a girl. But I saw this band and it was Grand Central and Prince was on the guitar. He was playing like Carlos Santana solos and Andre Simone was on the bass. And I mean, they were putting it down. They were like 15 years old on average. And they were putting it down like they were 25 year olds and I was mesmerized. And <clears throat> I think I kind of started to stalk Andre a little bit. We got to be real good buddies. And uh, one time we were skipping school, you know, smoking weed and, and um, you know, hanging out and, um, so, you know, I got hopped on my drums at my house and I started playing, you know, I started hitting him up with some uh, Tower Power, What Is Hip, some Soul Vaccination. And, you know, I had this big speaker behind my drums and I blasted, but I played, I was right in the pocket with it. Uh, and I stopped and Andre was looking at me like his eyes were stretched. I was like, uh, what's up, you good? He's like, man, I didn't know you could play like that. And I said, yeah, yeah, you know, he said, man, we're having problems with our drummer right now he said you should bring your um drums by an audition so i did that a couple days later and my drums got set up and they stayed there and that was it i was in from the time i played so in answer to your question um prince was really a um it, he was just like he was uh to people the way he presented himself that quiet but firmness that lured you in, you know, he was like that even back then. He didn't even talk to me for the first few weeks. He would just uh, call out the songs, we would do the arrangements, and then he'd be in the cut, looking at me, you know, all crazy and shit, you know, so. <laughs> and then finally, you know, after a few weeks, he warmed up to me. And, um, you know, from there, we really got to be good friends. And, and then, you know, uh, we split apart for a while. He went and got his record deal and all that. I left town, I came back, and then we got to be like best buddies. So, you know, it was a process. Were you still close before, right before he passed? Were you too close? Yeah, we, we definitely had our differences. Um, we had gone through a lot, you know, um, and, um, but, you know, for some reason, and this is why I think he kind of knew something was up because he was adamant about having me and my band come to Paisley Park and do a show for him. Mm -hmm. You know, and in the past he had had us, you know, show up and I out of my pocket, I paid for my band to get there and hotels and all of that. And then he say, I changed my mind and I don't want y'all on the show. So I kind of was a little salty. So I said, you know, next time you call me, brother, it's gotta be hundred percent up front in my bank account before I leave the house. Mm -hmm. So um, he wanted us to show up at Paisley. I, I told him the amount. I looked up the next day, it was there. I'm like, he's serious. So we went there and uh, we talked. And um, I mean, we really talked like we hadn't missed a beat. And um, it, was, it, was, it was really cool. We talked before the show. He partied during the show. After the show, um, we went to the um, cafeteria area of um, Paisley Park there. And we chopped it up for another hour and a half or so. And um, that was it, you know, after that, uh, two months later, um, he checked out on us. You you said something interesting. You said he, you feel like he knew what was up. And I, I have friends that are friends of family that have their thoughts. Do you think he knew he was gonna pass away soon? I, I think, I think, I think he knew a lot more about his health um, uh, than he revealed. Now, you know, having said that, I don't, I don't really know um, um, the severity of what was going on. I really don't know. Yeah. But I just really felt like he kind of talked to me in a way that he had never talked to me before. Mm -hmm. And at that time, 
I was just like, okay, this brother's feeling a little sentimental or whatever. But um, in hindsight, it just makes me feel like uh, uh, he knew uh, he knew something. And I think that's a testament of, uh, about how meaningful you were in his life for him to reach out in that time, especially with the differences you've had. And I know that I'm not going to make this whole interview about him, but I know there's people that think there's a lot more to that. Like con there's a lot of, you know, conspiracy theories about that. So we're going to leave that alone. But um, take me back to 1984. What was it like to star in Purple Rain? And do you think you got enough credit for, for making that movie a hit? Because, I mean, that movie was everything. I'll watch if it comes on now, I'm watching it every time it comes on. Well, that's I appreciate that. You know what? I think, yeah, definitely I got the credit, but I didn't get the money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got the credit. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, you stole the show. Oh, I love your purple rain and all of that. But um, <clears throat> my bank account didn't reflect that. <laughs> so they owe you some money is what you're saying. Well, you know, I, anytime. OK, let me put it in perspective. You know, and fifty thousand back then was was okay for me, because I really didn't, hadn't come from much. But um, then that same year, I see uh, Prince on the cover of People magazine saying that he made seventeen million. You know, I'm like, well, you know, in the reverse, I think if that was my boy, and you know, he did a bang up job in Purple Rain for me, like that, I kicked him a meal. You know, so you know, I would have just, you know, said, hey, look at what I'm doing, you know, but, you know, that's that's water under the bridge and I'm here and, you know, everything is beautiful. But, you know, like I said, the bank account did not reflect it. I mean, you're being nice, but if I found out my co-star made uh, $16,550,000 more than me, I would be, so I, now I understand the beef. I understand, <laughs> Morris Day. I understand what was going on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. How, how close was the movie Purple Rain to, to your lives at the time? Was it like that? I think um, it was, at times, it was very accurate. Um, you know, Prince and uh, being in the basement, uh, with the exception of the basement, he was at in Andre Simone's basement, not his parents' basement. But the basement that he was in uh, after his father kicked him out looked very much like the one in the movie. And, um, you know, it got to the point where we had some um, rivalry. But the rivalry came because um, he kind of created the Frankenstein monster. You know, he um, he let me put my own band together. He 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 taught us a work ethic, and that's why Prince was as great as he was because he worked twenty four seven. He never stopped, and um, he kind of taught us that. And we got into that mode, and we became treacherous as a band. And um, it got to the point where you know certain markets. Um, we would kick his ass, you know, and and um, so therefore he became cautious. So he stopped letting us on in Los Angeles, in Chicago, in Atlanta, uh, in New York, uh, because he didn't want. I mean, and there was nights where he he he, you know, uh, definitely did the Prince thing on us, and and but you know he didn't want to take that chance. So um, the rivalry was there, is my point. Wow. So it wasn't just about girls. It was about that kind of stuff. Like It was more about music, especially with Prince. And, and for us, it was more about music than anything. And that's why, you know, I'm sitting where I am today, because, you know, prior to meeting Prince and Andre, um, I, I was into my music. But once I got to know these guys and started hanging out with them, they didn't say if I make it. They said when I make it. And that's the attitude that I adopted. And um, <clears throat> it was, that's just how they, that's how we talked and that's how we rolled. And it was always music first. So I'm getting that there was a rivalry. Sometimes there was a little bit of hate as far as like not letting your group on. I'm gonna go ahead and say it for you. Okay, <laughs> I'm, a, I, I'm not sure who got more girls. I'm thinking y'all both was kind of knocking them down back in the eighties. Okay, y'all both had, yeah, 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 that going on. It was you. all good, you know. It was all good, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but on the positive side, the work ethic, and you did get a lot out of it yeah. looking back. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The work ethic was uh, one of the, the, the main lessons uh, that was a takeaway for us, uh, from myself. Uh, obviously, for uh, Jimmy and Terry, um, you've, seen, you've, you've seen what they've accomplished. And um, I think it was all really uh, due to the work ethic that he introduced us to. I don't know where he got it from being uh, as young as he was back then, but he was just driven. And he uh, really taught us uh, to have that drive as well.
not quite like him. I mean, I did like uh, go to sleep at night, which I don't think he did that, but um, you know, he taught, he taught us that work ethic for sure. Right. I have one more last Can you really play basketball? Was he a good basketball player for real? Awesome like James player. Player. Yeah, he was an awesome basketball player. You know, he, he was a little you. agile guy. You know, he, he could get all, you know, all around you and uh, uh, underneath you and everything. But yeah, he could play ball. He could play ball for real. I'm just not thinking him about him sweating out his hair, and I'm always I always have him in my mind with the little heel. So I'll, yeah, I'll, well, he played in the heels too. Now you you saw the Dave Chappelle episode; that was for real. No way. <laughs> okay, let's talk about some of you know your music now. You're still going strong, even releasing new music during the pandemic. Tell us about your new single, Head Rush, featuring Trinidad James. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I mean. The single, you know, is 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 off the chain. You know, it's funky and and um, my manager Courtney Benson, you know, said, you know, we should use Trinidad. But I wasn't really super familiar with Trinidad, but we sent the song to him, and the way he laced it, you know, and and you know, the work I had heard that he had done, you know, it was cool. But I did, I had no idea that he was going to, you know, uh, put it down the way he did, and the way he did, you know, his feature, it really made me. I had to go back in the studio and change some things because it, it, it just kind of, the way he put it down made me rethink the end of the song and it just made the song better. I love it. I think I would, that's like an unlikely pairing and I love things like that. I think that's just so, that makes it just so interesting. Exactly. So for your fans out there, you have to just delivered the biggest gift ever, a new Christmas song called Cooler Than a Santa Claus. Let's take a look. Let's do it. Nice. What inspired you to do a Christmas song? Is that your first time? Again, yes, absolutely. My manager, you know, ran that by me. And, um, you know, I really don't like the word manager, but my business associate, he ran that by me. And um, at first, you know, I was kind of like, well, you know, that's not what I do. I thought about it and um, I came back and I was like, um, you know what? That's a great idea. I said, we could have some fun with this because I got to put my own spin on. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started, called the team up, started working it up. It just kept getting better and better. And, um, you know, that's the end product. Love it. Love it. So is there someone out there that you haven't worked with that we, we just going to start claiming stuff for 2021? Like who out there that you haven't worked with that you'd like to? You know, Fortunately for me, um, there's a lot of artists, um, you know, who, who dig what we what we have done and um, a lot who, you know, really, you know, when they get the call, you know, they kind of jump to it. Like, you know, Trinidad, you know, he was really gracious and, and you know, uh, um, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, um, and we did uh, we did a song with Flo Rida and, um, you know, we, we, we've got a lot of people that that we're doing stuff with. And um, they're all really gracious and, and happy to be a part of, you know, what we've uh, accomplished and um, the history. And so, you know, and I guess I'm not trying to gloss over your question, but uh, okay. I guess I'm just kind of, you know, keeping it open. There's a lot of people that I would like to, you know, uh, work with. And um, I, I think, you know, the same thing. A lot of people would like to work with me. So we're going to explore that and see where it goes. All right. Now I want everybody to check out your new, um, your new and final solo album. So what would you tell us about that? You know, that sounds so, uh, so final, but you know, where that, that's know. Kind of, <laughs> it's kind of where we're at. Please stop right. saying it. I'm like, I don't want to say your final solo album. I don't want to say that. Yeah, I don't know but, how like that sounds, but, um, you know, it, it kind of is, you know, but you know, just like it's, um, Floyd Mayweather's final boxing match and everybody's final this and that, you know, so. Then we they just, come back. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, but we're just going to kind of leave it there and see what happens. But right now we've got some great music. Um, uh, we got a project coming out. Uh, it's They say an EP because we got only uh, eight songs. Back in the day, it was a LP with six songs. Now I guess you got to have a hundred songs. <laughs> so, you know, it's all good, but, um, you know, we, we, we'll see what happens. Before I go, what's the first thing you don't really go out like that much anymore? But what 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 do you miss most about being in quarantine? Like, what do you like? Can't wait to do when we get out of this. Well, Claudia, I think I've already told you. 
but I'm glad you uh, uh, brought the reprise on. Uh, I want to get back on stage. I want to get out there in front of people and I want to remind them, you know, what they loved about me so much. And um, I'm really looking forward to uh, somebody, you know, um, opening up the, uh, the venues so the musicians that love to do what we do can get back out there and do what we do. Well, we, from, from your lips to God's ears, and I hope it happens sooner than later. Thank you so much, Morse, for joining me tonight. You did that. I did get you to spill some tea. So you, you, I'm happy about this. We're going to take.